buen día, estudiantes de Power Unified School District. Bienvenidos a otra lección del español con la señorita Kim. Hola, ¿cómo están hoy? Hello, students of Power Unified School District, and welcome to another Spanish lesson with me, señorita Kim, your teacher. How have you all been? Today, we're going to talk more about food but we're gonna dive into a different country. Last week, we checked out Argentina, and I'm gonna show you a little video clip to see if you can figure out which country we'll be talking about today. There are three pictures of food that are big clues to this country's food culture. Try to listen and hear if you can learn the words for those different foods. Hola, estudiantes de Poway. Hoy en día, cocinamos mucho con el maíz, los frijoles y los chiles. Pero en este país, estas comidas diferentes son muy importantes para su cultura de comida. What did you think? Could you guess which country we're going to visit today based on the three different ingredients that are really important to their food culture? Let's revisit what we saw in that video. This country, or this country's food culture, uses a lot of frijoles, chiles, y maíz. Any guesses? Let's find out. Last week, we started talking about comida. Hablamos de la comida de Argentina. Do you remember that? We learned a lot about some of the food cultures, food culture in Argentina. We talked about asado. We talked about el mate. Today, we're going to continue talking about different food cultures from around the world. Who remembers how many countries in the world use Spanish as an official language? So many different countries. And I know that we've already talked about this, but each country has their own food traditions. Argentina, Bolivia, Chile. Each country eats unique foods and celebrates food in a very different way. Today, we're going to explore a new country. We already talked about Argentina. Today, we're going to dive in and explore one specific food tradition from the country, Mexico. Bienvenidos a Mexico. To be quite honest, Mexico is such a diverse country. Within the country itself, they've got so many different traditions and customs, but some things you might have already seen about Mexico is that this is their flag, is that the movie Coco takes place in Mexico? That mm, eating tacos is one kind of Mexican food? You might have heard about mariachis, tamales, or even baile folclorico. So let's go check out one specific tradition in Mexico's food culture. Put on your seatbelts, we are flying to Mexico. It wasn't a very long ride. You can see San Diego's here, and we've just flown down to the country right underneath us, Mexico. Today, we're actually going to just zoom in on one of these pictures. We won't be talking about tacos today. We won't be talking about mariachis. But today, we're going to take a look at this picture here. What are these? If you said that these are tamales, you are correct. Today, we'll be looking at these tamales. What are tamales? Here are some pictures to give you some hints. Mm. So what exactly goes in a tamal? 
And why is there a picture of a family here? Los tamales are eaten all throughout the year for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but there is usually one special time where a lot of Mexican families come together and make tamales together, and that's during the holiday season, the Christmas season. But first, let's take a look at what exactly goes into a tamal. How to prepare tamales. On today's Cooking with Pixar, we team up with the young musician Miguel to create a big batch of his abuelita's tamales rojos. For this recipe, we'll be filling our tamales with pork simmered in a red chile sauce. To start, add brown pork to a pot and top with water, as well as any herbs and spices you want to season your pork with. Miguel's brought the ones that his familia uses. Allow to simmer for a few hours until tender. Once done, Remove the pork and set aside to shred. But make sure to save that broth. <laughs> we'll need it later. Next, we'll start preparing our chile rojo. Split, de-seed, and toast your chile peppers. Then add them with some reserved pork broth to a blender, along with some garlic cloves, cumin, and salt. Blend until smooth. <gasps> Mira! <laughs> Look at it go! To complete the filling, Combine the red chile salsa and the now shredded pork in your large pot and simmer until the sauce has thickened, then set aside to cool. Let's prepare the masa, the dough for our tamales. I know someone who can help us, but it calls for a change of scenery. <laughs> wow, the land of the dead. Hola, Hector. Care to help us? <laughs> Muchas gracias. Combine corn flour with salt and baking powder in a bowl and mix with your hands to combine. While continuing to mix, add your lard or vegetable shortening, alternating with some of the reserved pork broth until the mixture is fluffy and smooth. You'll know the masa is ready when you can break off a small piece and it floats in a cup of water. Goal! It's finally time to assemble our tamales. Take a soaked and dried husk and evenly spread a thin layer of the masa inside the middle. Next, put a bit of your filling in the center. Fold each side of the tamal together to enclose the filling. Then, fold the bottom up to seal it shut. Repeat for as many tamales as you can. Gracias y adios, Hector. We'll always remember you. Ah, almost done! In a steamer basket, arrange your tamales vertically so that the open side points up. Steam for about an hour. When your tamales easily peel away from the husk, your tamales rojos are ready to share with your familia. Buen provecho! So very similar to how Argentinians' asado tradition is a family tradition or social tradition, a lot of families would say that making tamales with each other is a family tradition. Let's take a look at this one specific family that makes tamales together every year. Hi, my name is Monica Jimenez and I'm a counselor out of the Ontario branch office. But I am originally from Visalia, California, and today we are spending time in Central Valley during the holidays and hoping to pass on some traditions. In most Mexican homes during Christmas time, tamales is something you'll see on the table. So my hope is that my mom is able to help me pass on the tradition to our three girls, um, ages 10, 8, and 3. So we are um, outside today on my mom's beautiful uh, outdoor rustic kitchen and um, preparing some tamales yeah during the holidays because they get to spend time with family and learn uh, lots of traditions and um, things of that sort Gigi can you tell us what part of the process you're doing I'm getting the back of the spoon and spreading masa on the cold husk awesome this part of the process can be a little labor intensive, but it is adding your filling, usually to just fill the middle 
of the corn husks, giving you enough space to fold over the corn husks in three pieces and sealing them by folding it over. Camila, what are you holding? This is what it's gonna look like. Is it ready to eat already? No, it's tortilla. Mm -hmm. It's on the mine. What do we have to do with it still? We need a cup. Once they're all ready and filled, we put them in the pots with just enough water at the bottom to steam the tamales and put them to cook for about 45 minutes and we'll be able to enjoy them. It is yummy! So as you can see, in both Argentina and in Mexico, a lot of the food culture revolves around the community and their family. Food, family, and community go hand in hand. So now that we've learned about los tamales and when they're made with family and what goes inside of them, we're going to learn a few Spanish food words of our own. Here are five new words. One of the words was included in last week's lesson, so you should already be familiar with it. Repeat after me. Pollo. Tomate, el ajo, cebolla, la sal. Can you guess what all of these items are? If you said pollo is chicken, tomate is tomato, ajo is garlic, cebolla is onion, and sal is salt, you're absolutely correct. Take a good look at these words. Some of them have similarities with English words like tomate. We're gonna need these words for our game. Ready? Today, you are going to help us prepare a meal. We have all these different ingredients needed. And Senorita Kim, la maestra Senorita Kim, is going to need your help. She's going to say, quiero la cebolla. In this instance, you would have to find the cebolla or onion. Now that you know the rules of the game, let's review for the last time. You won't be able to see the labels in the game, so pause the video now if you need to study these words. Ready to get started? Help us prepare a meal. Quiero el pollo. ¿Cuál es el pollo? Quiero el pollo. The correct answer is chicken. I want the chicken. Quiero el pollo. Let's keep going. Quiero el tomate. ¿Cuál es el tomate? Tomate. Tomato. Quiero el ajo. Quiero el ajo. El ajo es the garlic. Quiero la sal. Quiero la sal. La sal es the salt. All right, I think we are ready for level two. I'm now looking for two different ingredients at the same time. Senorita Kim says, Quiero el pollo y la cebolla. Quiero el pollo y la cebolla. ¿Cuáles son? ¿Cuáles son? 
El pollo y la cebolla son chicken y onion. El pollo, la cebolla. Great job. Just a few more ingredients are needed. Quiero el ajo y la sal. Quiero el ajo y la sal. Aquí está el ajo y la sal. Uno más. Quiero el tomate y la cebolla. Quiero el tomate y la cebolla. Aquí está el tomate y aquí está la cebolla. What a great meal! Thanks so much for helping us out! We're going to end today's lesson with quiz time! Question number one. Which word represents this picture here? Is it mice? Is it maíz? Chile, fresa, or cebolla. The correct answer is maíz, corn. Super important ingredient in Mexican food culture. Question number two. Quiero tres tomates. What does this mean? Does it mean, I want chicken? I want three tomatoes? Do you have an onion? Or, I need garlic. Correct answer is, I want three tomatoes. Remember that the word for three is tres? Question three. What is una cebolla? Is it an onion, beans, a tomato, or salt? is A. It is an onion. Question four. Quiero una cebolla y la sal. What does this mean? Quiero una cebolla y la sal. Does it mean I want corn and garlic? I want beans? I want chicken and onions? Or I want an onion and the salt. The correct answer is, I want an onion and the salt. Question five. When are tamales often prepared as a family tradition? We are talking about in Mexico. When are they often prepared as a family tradition? Is it during the summer? During St. Patrick's Day? During Valentine's Day? Or during the holiday season around Christmas time? Correct answer is D, during the holiday season. It is often a Christmas time tradition. Thanks so much for joining us, amigos de PUSD. Adios y nos vemos para la próxima lección. Hasta pronto. Adios, adios.
cosmo, adiós a look, adiós a when, volveremos a cantar, adiós Lucía, adiós a la maestra, adiós a los niños, volveremos a cantar. <música>